Welcome to Jank Play TCG. My name's Landon, and here we play Jank. And speaking of Jank, with Stellar Crown coming out in just a few days, we got to go over the Jank list. Yep, I've made a new Jank list for uh, Stellar Crown, and we'll just have to wait and see what really um, sees play. But here are the cards that I consider Jank. Now, Jank can mean good or bad, but mostly it just means they're interesting right there's something about this card that i find fascinating that might be able to be made a deck out of or at least help a deck that's already out there um does not mean that these are going to be good cards or great cards <laughs> right just that they're interesting um also just to let you know i will be streaming later today if you're watching this as soon as it goes up later today wednesday I will be streaming and we'll be talking about the jank list we'll be talking about stellar crown and uh, all that stuff so hopefully hopefully y'all you all are ready for this so let's go ahead and jump into our first card to talk about and it's Ledian. Ledian is a fantastic card I'm so happy about this card I think it's a very good card that should not be a rare. It should be an uncommon and help out the popper format. This in popper would have cooked. It would have been amazing. Um, and mostly we're talking about this the ability sparkling star pattern. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may switch in one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with 90 HP or less remaining to the active spot. Yep, you get to choose what goes into the active. It just has to be 90 HP or rem or less remaining. So, pretty good switch. I do like the two colorless 70, not affected by any effects on your opponent's Pokemon. Um, I think that's pretty good as well. Um, oh, just, I should have done this earlier, but uh, the card images and the translations are provided by Justin Basil. Um, I could not find English scans of these cards. I know it's during pre-release right now. It's not technically released, but so close I would have expected to find some English scans, and I couldn't. So we're stuck with Japanese scans and translations that may not be 100% accurate, but are pretty darn close. All right, next up we got Cradley. I really want to build this deck. I really, really want to build this deck with Dangerous Laser, the A spec. Yes, that one. So, what we're looking at is a stage 2 fossil Pokemon, not the easiest thing to work with, okay? But, uh, the ability Mucus Buffet, <laughs> once during your turn you may flip a coin, if heads, choose Burned, Confused, or Poison. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now affected by that special condition. So, um, the idea is Dangerous Laser burns and confuses, right? Then you flip a coin, hopefully it's heads and you get uh, poison, but hopefully you have enough credibility out that you are able to, you know, hit enough heads to get enough special conditions out there. Then Marshy Winds will come into play here. For a single grass energy, that's right, one energy, this attack does 100 damage for each special condition affecting your opponent's active Pokemon. That's beautiful, right? If you get all three, you're doing 300, plus 10 for burn, plus 20, or... 10 for poison plus 20 for burn and then on their turn they are confused right you're already doing 330 damage before it's their turn and if they have something that can survive that they have a 50 50 shot on whether or not they actually attack or they hit themselves in confusion love it i think cradley is going to be so much fun mo rotom okay this is a tech card this can go into so many decks it is a simple one of because of its colorless energy Re requirement for an attack it's so easy to play this before during da uh, before doing damage discard all pokemon tool cards and special energy cards from your opponent's active pokemon just all of them right a special uh let's say a lugia right you're playing against lugia you can just discard all their special energy right it's really hard to recover special energy right now and and tools um so mo rotom being able to remove all that is just such a boom honestly i i think it's really really good next up we got eldegoss and this one surprised me i actually didn't have it on my list until i reread it right sorry uh zephyr gift put this pokemon and all attached cards into your deck 
If you do, search your deck for up to three cards and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. So, you're taking this stage one with the uh, energy cost of one colorless, and you're trading it for three cards of your choice. Does anyone remember Jirachi? Radiant Jirachi? How when it's knocked out, you get to search for three cards? This is more in control, right, than your opponent knocking out. Now, the downside is, is that your opponent can Iono you, or something along those lines, right? But, you're forcing them to play an Iono at that point, trying to disrupt you. If they can't find that, then you just got three free cards. The exact three cards that you picked, too. It's not draw three, it's search for three cards. I think that is phenomenal. Apparently I was thirsty before I hit play, sorry. Next, we got Hydrapple. Now, I did put every EX Pokemon in this list. Mostly so I could just make comments about them and less about whether or not they're good, right? So Hydrapple, um, I think, is phenomenal. I think it's really good. It's really strong. The biggest downside is that it's a stage two. Yep, that's it. Uh, the ability Ripening Charge, once during your turn you may attach a basic Grass Energy card from your hand to one of your Pokemon. If you attached Energy to a Pokemon in this way, heal 30 damage from that Pokemon. I do not think this is going to be great for healing. I think it's just going to be great for Grass Acceleration. If we take a look at Teal Mask Ogre Pond, currently the best Grass Energy Acceleration in the game, uh, that only attaches to itself. Then you gotta do some trickery to get on other Pokemon. In Boxer Pond, I use uh, Ogre Mask to change to a different masked Ogre Pond from the discard, and that gives me some variety. Some other people play Energy Switch. I, I do too, but you know, Energy Switch is another way. Thornton, I think, is another way that people could be using this. Hydrapple lets you attach it to whoever you want. It doesn't have to be teal mask right it doesn't have to be hydrapple it can be anyone and then for two energy colorless so i guess you could use a double turbo but who would really do that you're using the ability to attach a grass and then just manually attach a grass right um and this attack does 30 more damage for each grass energy attached to all of your pokemon i do like how this could combo with toad's cruel ex Toad's Cruel EX has an ability where you aren't affected by or your pokemon with grass energy attached aren't affected by um, attack effects, right? So, yeah, I think Hydrapple's just really good. The biggest downside is stage two. We'll see how people choose to use it. Next up, we got Salazizzle. Salazizzle is a card that I think is stroking a lot of curiosity by a lot of people. Even though it's not generally that great of a card, the double colorless attack is fascinating. It is, um... Sudden Burn, your opponent discards a card from their hand. If this Pokemon evolved from Sandalit during this turn, they discard two more cards. It's three in total. If you play uh, Zerosix Machinations, which I meant to put an image of that up here. Right? Sorry, I didn't. If you play that during your turn, they discard down to three, and then you evolve and use Sudden Burn, and now they have to discard the three cards in their hand. So their turn literally is... I draw the top card of my deck. Can I do anything with this? If not, pass. Which then you would play Turo and put something else up in the active, right? Uh, to attack or something. And um, you play down your Sandalit. Let's say you attach an energy to it. You pass. Your opponent draws another card. Can they play anything with these two cards they've gotten? If no, pass. You retreat your active Pokemon, put up Sandalit, evolve it, add that second energy, attack, right? Like, you can you can combo this, but it's going to be difficult to control, right? So, I think it is noteworthy. I think it is important to keep in mind. But it ain't good. I'll let you all figure that out. All right, Cinderace EX. Uh, this is the first Stellar EX card that we're looking at. The special thing about EX, Stellar EXs is they have attacks that require multiple energy from different types, and then they get to do something pretty cool, right? At least that's the idea. So for a fire double colorless, 280 damage during your next turn. This Pokemon can't use Flare Strike, but it's got free retreat, so does that really matter? You just need a switch in hand. You can retreat from Cinderace 
play that switch, put Cinderace right back up, or just have two Cinderaces that you're going back to back with, right? Um, 280 damage is a fantastic number to hit. Sadly, it's not KOing a Rivals uh, Stage 2 EX, but it is destroying most EXs out there, which is really good. And then we got Garnet Volley, right? Uh, this attack does 180 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. That's for the fighting, uh, fire, and darkness energies. Um, that one's okay. I like the bench hitting, but how the heck are you going to get a fighting and a dark energy on this? I know, I know the answer. I know the answer. Crispin. And then maybe you throw in that tool that lowers your ter Terra Pokemon's attack by one, right? Something along those lines. Um, you know... It's okay. I like the first attack, and the second attack is a nice, can I get this off sort of thing, right? It's not something you want to guarantee, but if you can get it up, mm, it's going to be so good. So good. Next up, we got Lapras EX. Yeah, that's back-to-back back -back stellar EXs here. Lapras EX... I wish it could be better. Uh, for a single water energy, this attack does 40 damage for each energy attached to this Pokemon. Okay, um, that's fine. Then the single energy really doesn't matter. You just have to make sure one of your energies is water. If you can attach a bunch of energies another way, then you could be doing stuff. Uh, does this replace Chim Pao? I don't think so. Chim Pao has a higher multiplier, even though you're discarding. It's fairly easy to recover. Uh, where Lapras, you accelerate all that energy onto it, let's say using Baxcalibur. I don't think. Lapras replaces Chimpow. I just don't. Um, especially with Teal Mask out there. Teal Mask does more damage for your bench Pokemon and your opponent. Or no, your en energy on the active and your opponent's energy on its active. Chimpow actually has a slight advantage there. So, yeah, I don't think Lapras is going to be replacing Chimpow as one of the best water decks. Um, and then we've got a uh, Lar... Larimar? Larimar? Rain? I don't know what that means. Uh, look at the top 20 cards of your deck and attach any number of energy you find there to your Pokemon any way you like. Shuffle the other cards back into your deck. So, this is energy acceleration. You get to look through a third of all the cards you brought into the game. 20 cards. To attach all this energy. That is phenomenal. After start, like start of game, six are in your uh, uh, prizes. You had a seven card hand, one card in the active, so that's a six card hand, but then you draw one for your turn, right? Um, that is a total of seven, what's that? 14 cards gone. You're more likely looking at half your deck, half your current deck, for cards to attach to Pokemon in any way you like. So I like that's not limited to just accelerant energy to itself. Um, but yeah, it's a water psychic metal. Getting that's going to be difficult. Um, you, you would need this attack to get that powered up, but you don't need to use this attack more than once or twice, right? If you have to use it twice, I'm sorry, you lost. <laughs> All right, let's check out uh, Tertoga. I know, right? The stage one fossil, not the stage two that evolves from it. We want to look at the stage one fossil because it's got splashing turn. Two water energy, 70 damage. Switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. It's a hit and run Pokemon doing fairly decent damage. 70? Usually hit and run Pokemon are limited to like 30, right? 30 and switch to the bench is often an attack you'll see on some you know, pointless stage one Pokemon. But this is 70. That's a huge difference. And I like the fact that you can protect your fossil Pokemon. You can bring it back to the bench so you can find, you can evolve up to its final form, which is 160 damage. I believe it takes uh, 30 less damage from attack. So really the health is more like 190 and then two RNG 150 is okay, right? But I really like the stage one here. If we ever have a better Snorlax doll, one that you don't have to start the game with, you know? Um, although you don't have to play a basic Pokemon Oh, that's mean. That's mean. Anyways, that's for a different video. But yeah, I really like the hit and run. 
Crabominable. Now, I'm also going to go through Veluzel a little bit later, but it's the Kofu deck, right? With the ability Prep Work, attacks used by this Pokemon cost one less. For each Kofu card in your discard pile, you can subtract four of those colorless, and then you'll just be left with one Water Energy, and doing 150 on a Stage 1 for one Energy. That is huge. I don't, I don't see a world where that isn't huge, right? Um, sure, during your next turn, this Pokemon can't use Haymaker. Okay, I don't really care at this point. Throw on a TM Evo and evolve some of your Pokemon. Throw on a TM De-Evolution and evolve some of your opponents. Like, or just play Switch to another Crabominable and do Haymaker again, right? There's plenty you can do. Um, so yeah, Crabominable, it practically destroyed pre-releases and it is really good here as well does it it's palm like move and shoot snowballs out of it that's crazy that was a crazy image i'm seeing next up we got dreadnought now dreadnought i think is such a beautiful pokemon stage one 140 hp however ability iron defense shell prevent all damage done to this pokemon by your opponent's attacks if that damage is 200 or more. So, the way I like looking at this is, you're up against Charizard EX, right? The dark type one. You have taken one prize, so Charizard's doing 210 damage. Can't knock out a Dreadnought. Just can't. What is it gonna do? Power up its, um, freaking Pidgeot to two-shot this thing? Like, come on! They can two-shot it right back for three energy. Like, just have a reversal. Or, you know, accelerate three energy onto it. It's not that difficult. I love Dreadnought. I think it's going to be one heck of a fun deck. And it's going to be one of those decks you have to be prepared for in case it ever gets popular. But as it gets popular, more people have uh, counters to it, so it'll become less popular. You know, like, it'll, it'll just swing around. And one tournament, someone's going to go big on Dreadnought and take it. I swear. I bet that's going to happen. Uh, not betting any money, though. Unless you want to, like, send money in uh, Super Thanks or whatever it's called. I appreciate it. But I, I ain't spent, I ain't betting money. <laughs> Alright, Veluza. There it is, Veluza. With the same ability as Crab Bonwimble, uh, attacks used by this Pokemon cost one colorless less for each Kofu card in your discard pile. The big difference here is that Veluza's attack is just four colorless. Meaning, if you have four Kofu in the discard... This attack you can use for free and do 110, just like Crime Rate, right? Um, but another extra effect that they threw on here is the fact that Sonic Edge doing 110, then this attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's Pokemon, which is pretty nice. Even those Pokemon where it's flip heads and you can't, you don't take damage next turn, uh-uh-uh, Sonic Edge hits through that. So Veluza and Crabomble work in the same deck, work very similarly. I think there's going to be a fun rogue deck there. Um, at least a fun popper deck, since Veluza is uncommon. Crabomble is also uncommon, so that's going to be a powerhouse in popper, for sure. Um, Alright, let's see. We got Electivire. This one I almost passed by, but then I realized what it was saying. Lightning Strike for two Lightning Energy does 220 damage on this stage one. That's how much Maridon EX does as a two prizer, as a basic. Same thing though, they both can't attack the next turn. Oh no, you just double switch and you're fine. Like, 220 damage for two energy rather than three on a stage one rather than a basic but for one prize rather than two. I think the benefits of Electivire outweigh the negatives of uh, Maridon. Like, you know, like, I think Electivire is going to be fun. Galvantula EX. Galvantula. Uh, for its first attack, its charged web, this is going to be the attack that most people are using it for, and it's two energy if your opponent's active Pokemon is a Pokemon EX or Pokemon V, this attack does 110 more, meaning it does 220. And this was at the moment where I was like, hey, Electivire is looking pretty good. Because Galvantula for two energy, doing the same amount of damage as a stage one and a two prizer. Yeah. 
Um, but the big thing everyone's talking about with Galvantula is the second attack. Uh, Fulgur... Fulgur... I don't know. 180 damage. Discard... Don't you love it when I can't pronounce words I just bail on them? That's what I do. Uh, discard all energy from this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. They can't play any item cards from their hand. As a fan of ATV, um, Galvantula looks pretty darn good. But it also looks slightly annoying, right? Doing 180 damage is good, and item lock is good, but three different energy, and you have to discard all three in between turns. Okay, so you're going to need that sparkling crystal tool to uh, attach onto a uh, Galvantula. You'll see that later on. All the A specs are on this list. Um, and uh, you'll need Crispin to accelerate one energy and place the other one, and it just seems really annoying, right? It's annoying me just talking about it. Uh, if you can get this consistently, good on you. I don't think that's going to be possible. Next up, we got Charge Bug. Parallel Lineup is the attack, and you get to search your deck for up to three Charge Bug and put them onto your bench, then shuffle your deck. Um, and this just goes perfectly with the um, Temporal Forces Vikavolt, where for two energy, this attack does 80 more damage for each of your bench Charge Bug. So you get three on the bench, right? Let's say that one gets knocked down. So you put up your next one, you evolve it to Vikavolt, and you uh, attack with Circuit Cannon. Well, you've got two more Charge Bug on your bench. Um, and Circuit Cannon will let you do, what is that, 160 plus 120 is 280 damage. Pretty good. Pretty good. And there's ways to, like, you could have had a, uh, a, a, a Grumpin, Gulpin, what is it called? The, the bug, uh, basic on your bench, so when that charge bug gets knocked out, you just recover them and evolve it, so you could have three charge bugs on your bench, and then you're doing 280 plus 80, 360. 360? Sounds good. Huh. Togunamaru. Togunamaru, I think, is important for the game. I think this is fantastic. It is a stall tactic so that you can find your course to victory, right? Um, for a single energy, 30 damage. We don't really care about the damage. What we care about is the effect, where if you have exactly one prize card remaining, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. There have been plenty of games in the past that are determined based off a coin flip for paralyze. Tokutamaru kind of takes the luck out of it and puts the skill in, right? Can you get your opponent down to one prize card while they are you know, destroying you sort of thing. And once they do, then you get Togedemaru in there and you paralyze until you find your win, your win condition, right? Um, because you can just continually to paralyze. We don't have to flip for a coin. So I think Togedemaru in anything playing uh, Luminous Energy or uh, uh, Lightning Energy should be a consideration just for that tech case of, hmm... My opponent only has one prize card remaining. How do I win this? Let me paralyze, paralyze, paralyze. Hey, I finally got the cards. Rare candy. Evolve up. Boom. Take out that EX and take my last two prizes. Sort of business. So, yeah. I, I really think it's good. Zero Aura. It's alright. Uh, it's two energy and it does uh, 20 damage plus 20 more for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. We've seen this type of Pokemon before. Yes, I think it's decent. It could slot into any type of lightning deck. Um, just occasionally, when you hit Electric Jerry, maybe throw it a bone, to give it one energy, and then at some point you can attach, put in the active, and hit for 120. Uh, staple card? No, not not really. You know, are there better cards? Possibly, but I still think this one's going to be fun. Slow King. Oh, talk about fun decks here. This one's got a fun attack. The first attack for one sidekick, one colorless, inspirational challenge. Uh, discard the top card of your deck. If that card is a Pokemon without a rule box, choose one of that Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack. Hey, do you remember Academy at Night's a thing? It's a stadium where you get to take a card from your hand and put it on top of your deck. How lame that is. Oh, I'm sorry. How amazing that is with Slow King. Yeah, Slow King is going to be some 
busted tricks. I can't wait to see what everyone comes up with. It's going to be a lot of fun. What Pokemon would you choose to have in your deck for Slow King to use its attack, right? Uh, throw it down in the comments. I would love to see what you choose, especially if it's a stage two. Let's see what stage two attack seems impossible to use, but now Slow King's here. Drifblim! I love this Drifblim. I'm going to build this Drifblim probably as soon as the cards are legal on PTCGL. Um, you just get to everyone explode now. 50 damage for each Drifloom and Drifblim that you have in play. Um, so that can mean 200 damage most of the time. But also, this attack does 50 damage. Well, right, we have that part. But this attack also does 30 damage to each of your Drifloom and Drifblims in play. And then, hey, what was that one Drifloom from Scarlet Violet base set that does more damage based on how much damage is on it? Oh, right, it was this one that I have on screen. Duh. Um, <laughs> two energy, 30 times each like damage counter on this thing. You could use Bravery Charm to extend their life a little bit further to hit those bigger numbers. Sure, it's not as easy as uh, uh, Gardevoir is, but I don't know. I actually think it's fairly easy. Uh, Gardevoir is just, like, neat, right? I think this is just so simple dumb it works right just make sure you can't get benched hit so have manaphy maybe even have jirachi or just go rabska i know i would like to go rabska and just everyone explode now every time and it will be a blast just to let you know this does do damage to itself that 30 damage on each of your drift and drift bloom in play count itself just like the 50 times each drift bloom and drift bloom in play counts itself so 200 damage pretty frequently i like it Doshbun ability full time belly when the, you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn you may heal all damage from each of your evolution Pokemon if you do discard all energy from the Pokemon that were healed in this way a lot of big stage 2 EXs have actually fairly low energy requirements so full time belly can actually heal quite a lot of damage you do get stuck with a 250 HP um, 2 prize liability on your bench but hey nobody said you can't play Toro just pick that sucker up put down that Fido and threaten another full heal and see what your opponent does probably concede at that point Doshbun just seems like it's going to fit into a lot of decks Anything that plays Turo now to remove a fully damaged evolution Pokemon to, like, put up something else, I mean, just use Doshbun now, right? To fully heal and then Turo pick it up so you don't actually have to re-evolve everything. Like, I don't know. I think Doshbun's super good. Oh, it's got an attack. 130. Your opponent's active Pokemon's now confused. As much as I love confusion. Nah. Iron Boulder. Now, Iron Boulder is a card that I think a lot of people are going to overlook. They're going to be like, no, it's too hard. But this is another deck that I'm playing on building. Iron Boulder, Adjustable Horn, 170 damage. If you do not have the same number of cards in your hand as your opponent, this attack does nothing. And um, I'm going to partner this with Zatu. I know, that seems weird, right? You're going to be playing Judge and I don't know to try to get the same card hand. However... You still want to be moving quicker than your opponent, right? So, Zatu, play one basic psychic energy, draw two cards. Uh, you kind of see where I'm going with this, right? Zatu lets you customize your hand to get the right number in your hand so that you can do 170. It reminds me very much of the Yon Mega that won 2016 Seniors. And I'm forgetting the trainer's name, so I apologize, but one of my favorite decks. They had it where I believe if you have four cards in your hand, you can use the attack for free, right? This is slightly different. You gotta match your opponent, and then you're doing 170. And 170 is a good chunk of change, right? You're two-shotting most stage two EXs, right? Unless they're playing Heroes Gape or some nonsense. But uh, yeah, I think Iron Boulder is definitely worthy of a deck build. And you'll probably see it here in Jig Play. Marowak. Okay, this Marowak, the first attack sucks. Forget about the first attack. But this Marowak, it was pointed out in my Discord, I forget by who, let me know down in the comments if it was you, that this is the perfect, finally, a good 
Marowak to combo with the Cubone, right? So the Cubone from 151 had this cheering bone ability. As long as this Pokemon is on your bench attacks, used by your Marowak, do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Now, you need one Cubone under this Marowak, so at most you can have three Cubones, but that's plus 90 damage. That's pretty good. Now we want to get a damage counter on one of those Cubones, right? Because Bone Revenge, 60 plus. If any of your bench Cubone have any damage counters on them, this attack does 120 more damage. Okay, so that's 60 plus 120, that's 180, plus 90, that's 270, uh, right? I think 270 knocks out most stage one EXs, right? Um, you could throw on the uh, uh, maximum belt a spec, and then you're doing uh, 320, which knocks out most stage two EXs. So I think Marowak is going to be really fun. Um, the two energy cost is a little restrictive because now you got to play double turbo, and double turbo will mean you aren't getting those one hits on stage twos. But whatever, right? I still think stage one, uh, single prizer, this can do a lot of damage. A lot of damage. Metacham EX. I told you I was going to look at everything, right? So first I want to cover the yoga kick, the bottom attack. 190, not affected by weakness or resistance. Why? If it was affected, if it was just not affected by resistance, hey, that's not bad. Not affected by weakness too? Come on. So you're just two-shotting most things. Um, yeah, you're not even one-shotting a lot of basic EXs. Yeah. Eh. And the top attack is decent. Put damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon until its remaining HP is 50. Why 50? Because that doesn't combo with King Gambit. Um, King Gambit, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. Well, no, it does partner with that. What doesn't it partner with? I, I forget. But yeah, you'll just basically have this. Use Dangerous Laser, then Brute Bonnet with a Hisuian Sneasler on the bench. And boom, you use this attack. Then they're hit with per Burn and Poison uh, times 3. And that would be 50. So that you bring them down to 50 and then they're damaged 50 and you win. Right? That's the idea. Um, for your two colorless, you could use a double turbo here. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be fun. There's going to be some sneaky decks using it. Is it going to be the best deck in format? Probably not. Lucario EX. This is just bad. Just ignore this. Lucario, cool Pokemon. This card? Garbage. I'm sorry. It's just so bad. Diancie. Secretly legit, okay? This basic... Uh, Pokemon single prizer that for a single colorless energy can do 40 times the amount of special energy attached to your opponent's Pokemon. We got a one energy counter to Lugia. Yes, thank you, please. <laughs> Love it. I think this one's going to be so much fun to play around with. Phalanx. Phalanx, okay, seriously, one of my favorite Pokemon of Gen 8. Um, link formation. Search your deck for up to two basic grass po. For you two basic Pokemon, not grass, anything. Two basic Pokemon. Put them on your bench, then shuffle your deck. That's fine. Um, it's a call for family, which is pretty good. You get two on your bench. Sure, Phalanx might get KO'd, but hey, you got two other Pokemon to work with now, right? Um, so that's good on its own. Then we have the second attack, simultaneous attack. 30 plus um, damage. If this Pokemon used Link Formation during your last turn, this attack does 90 more damage. So, first turn, go in second. You attach an energy, you use Link Formation, you get two Pokemon down on your bench. If your opponent can't knock out a Phalanx, you attach a second energy, do 120. I think that's good. It's colorless attack, so it can, be, it can work in any type of deck that you want. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And, yeah, I think it's worthwhile. Oh, I forgot to change this to Garnacle EX. Sorry about that. Um, ability Salt Body. 
This Pokemon can't be affected by any special conditions, so it counters Cragly. It's got 340 HP, so it's pretty beefy. Block hammered, uh, 170, and then during your opponent's next turn, this takes 60 less damage from attacks. It's fine. It's pretty good. Not great. 170's two hitting everything, even hit two hitting a uh, opponent's Gurnacle, right? Unless they heal. There's there's ways to play around with this. I don't think it's one of the best EXs, but I think it'll be fun. Swalot compared to Swalittle, Swalot is pretty good. <laughs> there's no Swalittle, I'm sorry. But if they come out with a regional form of Swalot, can it please be Swalittle? <laughs> uh, Munching Mouth, 10 plus damage. If this Pokemon has more energy attached to it than your opponent's active Pokemon, this attack does 160 more damage, meaning it's doing 170 for a single energy, right? If you can disrupt your opponent's energy, if you can get them to have less energy than you, 170 for a single prize stage one is darn good. Darn good. So yeah, I, I like it. The second attack, 100 damage and uh, poison. Nah. Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl is an interesting one. I like the pro... Uh, pro... Pro... Oh, proactive? No. Provocative? Provocative. Yeah, I guess provocative clutch. Uh, switch out your opponent's active Pokemon to the bench. This attack does 160 to the new active Pokemon. So, your opponent gets to choose because you're pushing their Pokemon to the bench. They don't have a Pokemon in the active, so they gotta bring one active, right? Um, but 160 and forcing switch outs is interesting, in my opinion. And that could be super dangerous for your opponent of not having something that's easily retreatable. So what, they gotta use their switch? Do they have a switch in hand? Like... Yeah, I like it. I think it's really good. And then 3 energy, 160. Discard 2 energy. It's just bad. Kling Clang. This was a fun one. Um, I discovered this during pre-releases. Uh, I've done all my pre-releases. This is after the fact. So I didn't know the cards going into pre-release, which is so such a fun way to play. But this Kling Clang, I never heard anyone talk about until I saw it. Um, emergency spin the ability once during your turn if this Pokemon is in your hand and your opponent has a stage 2 Pokemon in play you may play this Pokemon under your bench skipping the evolution completely ow that hurt um, 130 damage for 2 energy discard all energy from this Pokemon not great but I love that you can skip to it right if your opponent gets a stage 2 out um, say Bax Caliber, you just get 2 energy on this sucker even if it's a double turbo and with weakness, you're one hit king or chimp pow. Do we need a chimp pow counter? I don't know. But hey, now you got one. Mel Metal. Um, Varios in the Discord. Shout out to them because they are trying to make this Mel Metal work. They try to make every Mel Metal work, it seems. But we're talking about remodeling Axe, the second attack for three energy. That does 250 damage. 250 is a good number, right? It's a good number. However, before doing damage, discard all Pokemon tool cards from this Pokemon. If you can't, this attack does nothing. Uh, so the idea is you throw a Leftovers on there. It discards the Leftovers. Once you got two in the discard, you use Snorlax to get them back out and you can play one down. Um, so the tool management isn't going to be too difficult for this. Really, the difficulty comes from the three energy requirement and only doing 250. And since you have to discard um, the tool before doing damage, you can't play anything like a maximum belt, vitality ban, defiance ban to increase your attack, right? You can't even play anything for defense, right? Because you got to discard that tool. So it'll be discarded before your opponent's turn, and yeah, so it's going to be very difficult to use. There's not a lot of benefit to it, but 250 is still a good chunk of change. Mel Metal EX. It's just bad. It's just so bad. Four energy, flip two coins, a hundred for each heads. Four energy and only 200 damage maximum. Three energy, 
250. Four energy, 25% chance of 200. Yeah, it's just so much worse than Lucario. Orthworm EX. Now, this looks like a fun guy. Not only do I love the full art, where it just looks like he's the happiest worm on Earth. Um, I love this ability, uh, Kerplow Return. When this Pokemon is damaged by an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, even if this Pokemon is knocked out, put two damage counters on the attacking Pokemon for each metal energy attached to this Pokemon. Now, its attack, doing 150, needs four energy. If you can maintain that energy on there, then you can get four metal energy on it at least and you're doing 150 then when they hit you with four metal energy attached that's like what uh uh 80 more damage so really the damage comes out to 230 which is pretty good in my opinion yeah i like it i like it a lot uh, you could bravery charm this thing to make it last a little bit longer too um yeah just fantastic no notes Raging Bolt. It's the only dragon in the set. I had to put it on the list. Um, its first attack is okay. This attack does 30 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon for each energy attached to this Pokemon. I like the fact that it's not uh, like limited to um, uh, like sp specific energy. Sure, the attack cost is light and fighting. You can get that with Crispin pretty easily. But let's say you throw in a double turbo somewhere. You can accelerate energy onto it through another means right um so then you can hit the bench with a decent attack number that might do the correct amount of damage i like it i think it will be interesting three energy 130 trash knocked out okay oh and apparently i forgot to update this one too okay so we're in the colorless pokemon now and we just gotta make sure one thing is clear Colorless Pokemon and Terra Pokemon are getting a heck of a lot out of this. This basically starts like a, this is how you build Terrapicares section of the video. Um, because of Knockdown, not Raging Bolt, uh, ability, Jewel Hunt, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, if you have any Terra Pokemon in play, being Terrapagos, you may search your deck for up to two trainer cards, reveal them, put them in your hand, then shuffle your deck. Remember when Inteleon was a good card? Yeah, this is a stage one, not a stage two. Fan Rotom! Oh, man! Oh, wait, one second. I gotta point this out. Knocked out. 100 HP. Fan Rotom! Ability Fan Call once during your first turn. You may search your deck for up to three colorless Pokemon with 100 in HP or less. Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. You can't use more than one Fan Call ability during your turn. So you get Fan Rotom out, right? Buddy Buddy able, right? It can come out with Buddy Buddy. Um, and then you're able to grab three colorless Pokemon with 100 HP or less. That could be two, two hoot hoot and a knocked out. That could be a bouffant knocked out hoot hoot. That could be um, two bouffants and knocked out because you already buddy buddied out two uh, hoot hoots, right? Like the combinations are endless and I'm gonna get to bouffant eventually. But just the amount that you're able to do with colorless Pokemon just from fan Rotom made uh, pre-releases just pop off, right? Uh, if you played in one of the pre-releases, you saw this happening. It was amazing and fun and interesting. Fan Rotom, so freaking good. Bufalon, hey, look at that. Ability, Curly Wall. If you have any other Bufalon in play, your basic colorless Pokemon takes 60 less damage from attacks from your opponent's Pokemon. The effect of Curly Wall doesn't stack, so you only get back of one, but that is 60 less damage on all of your colorless Pokemon. Hey, that's not bad. And it's got 100 HP. Fan Rotom, knocked out. Fan Rotom, Bufalon. Fan Rotom. It's just ridiculous, right? The, the way that these three cards connect is crazy, but it gets even better. Not this one. Uh, Talonflame. <laughs> Sorry, not this one.
But when I get to Tropagos, that's when it gets better. Uh, Talonflame. This is just a random card that I saw that I was like, hey, that could be fun. Um, Arrow Chase doing 110 damage. Plus, if the retreat cost of your opponent's active Pokemon is two or more, it does 220 damage for two energy and a zero retreat cost Pokemon. I think that's pretty good. Tropagos. There we go. This is where it gets better, right? Tropagos. Unified Beatdown, 30 times damage. If you go second, you can't use this attack during your first turn because then it would be busted. That's how good this is. This attack does 30 damage for each of your benched Pokemon. Oh, that's not that much. There's only five bench spots. It's only 150. Why is everyone talking about that? Because you're wrong. Because where is it? There it is. Area zero ne nether under depths under depths. Uh, that card. Uh, it's coming up, but it lets you have eight bench spots, meaning that's eight times three, which is two two forty. Even with a double turbo, that's two twenty. You got fan rotom stacking your bench. You got a stadium war to win. And you got Tropagos, who's colorless, which takes 60 less damage with Buffalon out. And how do you make this all work? Knocked out. Uh, the other attack, Crown Opal, 180. During your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from basic non-colorless Pokemon. Bust it. Hey, Area Zero Nether Under Depths. Why do I say Nether Depths? Because I'm running a D&D campaign Call of the Nether Deep. Area Zero Under Depths. If a player has a, po a Terra Pokemon in play, that player can have eight Pokemon on their bench. Yep. Uh, when this card leaves play or a player no longer has any Terra Pokemon in play, then discard bench Pokemon until they have five Pokemon on the bench. If both players discard, the owner of this card discards first. That's interesting that the owner of the card discards first, even if it's not their active turn. Interesting. Briar. I was surprised by, Bri by Briar. I didn't think this was good. I was wrong. Um, shout out to, to Wes. He beat me in a pre-release because of this, and it was amazing. Um, until the end of this turn, if your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out by damage from one of your Terra Pokemon's attacks, take one more prize card. If you can play this card, uh, you can play this card only if your opponent has exactly two prize cards remaining. It is just a, a uh, uh, good way to um, basically steal an extra prize card, right? Uh, I really like it. I think it's really good. Yeah. Crispin. Crispin. Uh, search your deck for up to two basic energy cards of different types. Reveal them to your opponent and put one of them into your hand. Attach the other energy to one of your Pokemon. Then shuffle your deck. The important thing here is, is if you get one energy card, you search your deck and sadly you only have one. Or you got multiples of the same type of energy because this has to, it says it has to be different types, right? So all your whatever energies are prized or in the discard or whatever. You only get one energy, it goes into your hand. You can't attach it. That's the caveat. But Crispin is so good. It is going to be so good. It's going to allow so many decks to pop off. It's going to let every stellar uh, Terra Pokemon be decent. It's just good. Deluxe Bomb. Okay, so I really like this card. Um, if the Pokemon this card is attached to is in the active spot and is damaged by an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, put 12 damage counters on the attacking Pokemon, then discard this card. I like it. I really liked Bursting Balloon back in the day, so this is just a more powerful Bursting Balloon, but as an A-spec. I don't like that it's an A-spec. It's going to be difficult to play. It's easy to play around. Um, just use... Uh, lost vacuum and it's gone forever uh but i still think it's good and it's fun and it's interesting glass trumpet remember what we were talking about with tropagos let me read this you can only play this card if you have a terror pokemon in play so thinking back to tropagos 
choose up to two of your benched colorless Pokemon and attach a basic energy from your discard pile to each of them. More energy acceleration. We already got Crispin, but no, that wasn't enough. We wanted an item card to make Tropagos even better. Yeah. Sorry. Grand Tree. Ooh. This is a spicy meatball. Uh, once during each player's turn, that player may search their deck for a Stage 1 Pokemon that evolves from one of their basic Pokemon in play and put it onto that Pokemon to evolve it. If that Pokemon uh, is now a Stage 1 Pokemon, they may search their deck for a Stage 2 Pokemon that evolves from that Pokemon and put it onto that Pokemon to evolve it. Then, that player shuffles their deck. It's, it's accelerating evolutions, and I love it. It goes from a basic to a stage two. Now, the important thing to realize is, for that basic, it doesn't break the evolution rule, right? It still has to be out for a turn before it can evolve, so don't be playing this on turn one. Got it? Um, and the downside is, is that then your opponent can use this. That could be bad. That could be really bad. Um, but... You're using it, your opponent's using it, and this is both good things, right? You, you get to use it, maybe your opponent's deck isn't built like that. Maybe it's just built off basics, right? So yeah, Grand Tree. Gravity Stone! This might be the comeback for Spide Ops. If the Pokemon this card is attached to is in the active spot, the retreat cost of both active Pokemon is one more. Spide Ops really didn't want to get out of the active anyways, but now, it can do 30 more damage with Gravity Stone. It's just a way to increase the amount of damage that Spide Ops can do. And it increases the retreat cost so your opponent can't retreat out of it, right? Like, it's just a pretty good card. It'll be used for more things than just Spide Ops. But, um, yeah, I still think it's good. Kofu. Now, this is mostly on here because it's going to be good for that Kofu deck. But Kofu also has an effect. Uh, put two cards from your hand on the bottom of your deck in any order, then draw four cards. That's pretty good. If you can't put two cards from your hand at the bottom of your deck in this way, you can't play the card. Whoops. Cough. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, it's decent. It's a pretty good draw card. Um, who was it? I think it might have been Azul that I overheard uh, him saying how like this could replace uh, Colrus in a lot of decks, right? Colrus is look at 5, Lost Zone 2, keep 3. This is just draw 4. It's a fairly, fairly easy draw 4 to use. So Kofu is pretty good in my opinion. Lacey. Lacey is a good card. Shuffle your hand into your deck, then draw four cards. If your opponent has three or fewer prize cards remaining, draw eight instead. That's about the halfway point through a match. If you are about halfway through, this is amazing shuffle draw. If you're not, it's one less than the best shuffle draw. Think about it. Youngsters, the best shuffle draw currently. I know, right? It kind of hurts, but it's true. Sparkling Crystal. Attacks used by Terra Pokemon. This card is attached to cause one energy less of any type. Yay. Terra Pokemon are just so good. Imagine this in Charizard where they can accelerate three energy. Well, their active just needs one and then they can put two elsewhere, right? Like, just have, just put this Sparkling Crystal on that Charizard. Probably the worst way to use it, but it's a way to use it, right? Um, there's other things that you could do. A uh, Skeledurge, I think, could be fun as a one energy attacker. Um, instead of attaching two energy, you can discard one, do extra damage. Um, you know, uh, my friend's got Dragapult that they're building. Yeah. And that's it for, um, what was it called? C Stellar Crown. Now we have the next set to look forward to, which is coming out in November, um, Surging Sparks. And it's a Pikachu set. Because look at that. That's Pikachu. Right there. Yeah. Um, and it comes out in November. Like, second week of November? First week of November? 
pre-release starts October 26th. So two weeks after that. Um, but it looks pretty good. So the main things to know about Surging Sparks is that we get eight new A-Spec cards, nine Stellar Terra Pokemon EX, and nine Pokemon EX. I really feel like some of those Stellar Pokemon should have been in this set. There were only four. Uh, 23 Illustration Rare, 11 Special Illustration Rare Pokemon and Support Cards, and 6 Hyper Rare Gold Etch Cards. And from these 4 Booster Pack images, we can see we're getting a special uh, Terra EX Pikachu, which is going to be fun. It's going to have a Terra Blast move. Can't wait to see what that does. Um, then we've got our Chaladon, which looks pretty cool from what I've heard of friends. Like, it like removes its own weakness and hits pretty good. So, it, it seems like a pretty good stage 1 deck. We've got a Stellar Alolan Executor, and since it's the best dragon, we all know that, right? Alolan Executor is best dragon type Pokemon. Can't wait to see what the Stellar form does, and um, I bet that's going to be fun. And then we're also getting a Latios EX card. I didn't see anything mentioned about the other one, but maybe I just misread that. Latios, Latios. Uh... Didn't see anything about Latios, but it is on the, the, the art, I guess, or something. I don't know. But yeah, uh, those look like fun. Can't wait to see what the new A-Spec cards are. Uh, this is the last set of the year, as far as I know. Unless they announce a special set. Most of those are begin early the next year, though. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't really have much else to say. Except, like, I guess it's going to be trying to catch us up to Japan's year, end of year, and then the next set will be the first one of the year. Can't wait to see what it's about with the new Legends game coming out. There's a lot of speculation going on. But yeah, th we got one more set before speculation goes wild. And just wanted to point this out for the Horizon, the Pokemon Horizons fans out there. I've been really enjoying the anime. I highly recommend checking it out. Um, on November 15th, they will be releasing a special Grand Adventure Collection, which gives you Tropagos and Friends as a giant card that's not legal, you know, really. Um, and then we get a stamped uh, Sprigatigo and a stamped Fukuoka. And all I have to do is ask, why no Quaxley? We got Dot right there. Why can't Dot get a Quaxley card in this collection? I call Bull, but yeah. At least she's in the Tropagos and Friends art. It looks cute. It looks cool. I highly recommend it. And that's it for today. That is the jank list. That is what to look forward to from Surging Sparks and this look at Grand Adventure. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you stuck around me through this whole thing, just type below saying uh, that Pokemon Horizons thing looks really cool or something along those lines. So I know you saw the ending. Um, I really appreciate each and every one of you. Highly recommend you check out the Discord. Highly recommend you um, subscribe and ring bell notifications so you know when I go live later today if you're watching this the day it comes out. And, um, yeah, I, be good to yourself. I appreciate you. And, of course, of course, until next time, keep playing Jank.